today on Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. He got carjacked by a retarded person. <laughs> <laughs> David Arquette, I hope you accept our apology for butchering your name on episode 69. Mad props for uh, banging Courtney Cox. Melee's only 47. <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, it went down. <laughs> I'm Will Ferrell, damn it. You have to pay a thousand dollars to see my testicles. Oh, he's got a rape scene? <laughs> he's like excited now. <laughs> yes, there's a rape scene. <laughs> Probably Probably so. got... You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello, and welcome to episode 72 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Tim. Uh, <laughs> Tim is a guest host again. Yep. Uh, from 65 and 66 and from other game shows. Glad to have him on. So this this episode, we've got uh, Game of the Week action. We've got a celebrity apology that we're going to be addressing. Uh, have... <laughs> I heard you guys said like five times. <laughs> uh, what was you guys are saying? What you were saying? Will, Will, um, Joe, Joey. Oh, Will, Will Arquette. Right? Will, yeah, Arquette Will... Will Arquette's such a good actor. He's my favorite actor. <laughs> I have all the Will Arquette movies. He is in Scream. I, I'm in the Will Arquette fan club. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I was like, something's not right <laughs> when I was saying Will Arquette, but we'll get into that. Um, also, we have a top five for you, top five comedies, and we also have a Dumb and Dumber 2 review. We're going to start off with quote time. It's my quote time. Let's see if you guys get this one. But my lips hurt real bad. <laughs> I know. You guys want to go? I think I know. Yeah. That's what Nick guess. It's funny because we know it. Oh, man. I think it's from Napoleon Dynamite. It, it is. It's not. Let me think it's not. Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> Xbox 10 is my jerk of the week. <laughs> uh, yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, very funny movie. Uh, my YouTube video recommendation is going to have to be Caveman Games. <laughs> uh, Brad vs. Nick. It's, pretty, it's about a half hour long. It's on YouTube, and it goes through the whole Caveman Special Olympics. you get got your mate toss going on. You've got a dino race, Tyrannosaurus vaulting, fire starting. <laughs> pretty difficult but you guys will just watch it you guys will see for the record I know perspirating is not a word I was I had an adrenaline rush and I forgot the word perspiring oh <laughs> <laughs> I know Xbox Tim will call me out on that shit so I'm just addressing it before he has the chance <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of you have noticed that we started using beeps in our podcast and we never addressed it Basically, we know a lot of ignorant people still use the term gay as demeaning towards homosexual people. We just use it like if it's something stupid, but we know that it could offend people. So that's why we beep it out, because we don't want anyone to get offended. Uh, also, retarded, Brandon wanted us to beep that one. I'm not sure why. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah, you're I like... I that all the time. Yeah, but on the podcast, I was like, dude, don't say retarded. You make me uncomfortable when you talk about retarded people. Oh, no. I, I, I don't care about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anymore. I didn't, I, he got I, carjacked by a retarded person. I'll turn them off. He's turning them off. It's like, I haven't been nice to them. <laughs> I've been nice for too long. <laughs> uh, my last monologue of business is going to have to be a sincere apology to David Arquette. <laughs> I was thinking of Well Arnett back on episode 69. We were talking about David Arquette, and for some reason I kept calling him Will Arquette, and then Nick said, no, it's Joey Arquette <laughs> from, whoa, the Blossom <laughs> brother, Joey Lawrence. But David Arquette, really, really do love you. Let's go around and each tell our favorite David Arquette movie. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I liked him in Scream. 
and I liked him in Eight Legged Freaks, <laughs> and I liked him in Ready to Rumble. I liked him as the WCW champion. Yeah, he was the champion. Yes, he was. I liked him in uh, Ready to Rumble. <laughs> Is, uh, have we not named all the David Arquette movies? That <laughs> wasn't very nice of Brad to take every single movie he's ever made. Yeah, like, we, <laughs> I was just giving you guys options if you guys couldn't think of any. I enjoyed Ready to Rumble. Uh, the two movies that he's been in. <laughs> I enjoyed that one more. David Arquette, I hope you accept our apology for butchering your name on episode 69. Mad props for uh, Bang and Courtney Cox. That's right. <laughs> You got a hell of a catch there. <laughs> and getting the fuck out of there where yeah. she snatches all old and dry. Exactly. Props. Game of the week. She's about right for Jeremiah now. <laughs> 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 fucking Jeremiah fucking went up on that. <laughs> Pick up fucking Dave Arquette's scraps. Oh, Sloppy seconds. <laughs> Sincere apology, Jeremiah. What, what, Tim, <laughs> what Tim is referencing is... No, uh, no I'm not referencing anyone. Jeremiah's all sweet. <laughs> Jeremiah likes to date old people. <laughs> it's not a bad strategy, man. <laughs> yeah. when you knock them up. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to have a responsibility. But if they just keel over, then you collect that inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think 70-year-old ladies could get pregnant. <laughs> game of the week? Yeah, let's do some game of the week. Do you have a game of the week? Uh, just the Evil Within. I beat it. It's awesome. Playing through it again. <clears throat> Um, I am Game of the Week less. I've been too uh, busy this week and have not played any games. I've played through Ninja Gaiden again, but I just got up to the second Jack Reel fight. Logan said, why are you playing this game again? I said, because I want to get good at it. It's a fun game. I played like five seconds of Dragon Spirit or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's nice. What, what, is it Dragon Spirit? Dragon Spirit. <laughs> we found it at the arcade at the, the movie theater today. It's like a 1942 type game, except for you're a dragon. It's pretty sweet, but the joystick sucks, so I, <laughs> so I couldn't really do anything. And I lasted about five seconds because Brad abandoned his quarter that he'd uh, deposited into the machine. Yeah, I walked away. I, I can't remember why. I think because I was trying he to. Said, I don't want to play anymore. I, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I never walked away from a game that I put money into. <laughs> so I took over and quickly died. <laughs> Too? Um, uh, my daughter, I was playing Titanfall a little bit with her to satisfy her. I don't, can't really get into the first person shooter games too much, but that's alright. I mean, I still get my ass killed. It's like, you know, I, I've got, I think I've gotten to the point now where I can kill more than I get killed, but, you know. Yeah. And it's alright. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool game. It's cool having the Titan to run around with him, step on people. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I still, um, it's cool. You can jump up on their titans and you know open their little hatch and shoot you know shoot them from on top. That's pretty sweet. It's, it's a pretty fun game as far as those type of games go. It's just I wouldn't choose to play that. Yeah. But I'll give it a thumbs up. Isn't that the game that Justin gets a boner off of? Um, he does play that, and he he gets a boner off all the people who play those games. Like they just get a boner off whatever the new game is that <laughs> week. And it's like it's all the same shit. It know? is. It really is. And it's like and it's cool if you like that. I just I mean they, like Justin like makes the case like oh it's just like when we play laser tag. It's like well I like actually doing it. It's fun because you're playing with your friends. It's not fun for me. I mean, and plus I don't have anyone I can really play with. You know, like no one else has the Xbox One. So you know, so I can't play with Justin because he's on 360. Hmm. Where, where's the game feel that I bought you? It's fucking right here. I'm can I see it? it? I May I please that. see your game fuel that I purchased? <laughs> oh, I was just trying to remember what video game it was. Call of Duty, I guess, released a new video game. Advanced Warfare. Yeah. yeah. The only reason I like that is because Game Fuel comes out whenever they release a new game. <laughs> well, so I'm all I'm a fan of Call of Duty, I guess. I went and visited your guys' favorite place. I think it was last week when this fucking game came out. What was it? At GameStop. Oh, oh man. Because we, we were getting, uh, we're at the little taqueria by our house right there. Yeah. And, and um, the GameStop is next door, so our Holly was waiting for the food. I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to wait 15 minutes. Yeah. Me and her walk next door, <laughs> look at games, and um, there were all the losers in there standing in line to buy this game. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Oh, you get one extra gun. Oh, fuck, <laughs> hell yeah. It's so sweet. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? They, they make a new of these games like twice a year. Yeah. What's up? That's a big fucking deal. Like the only reason Ariel is playing Titanfall now is because it went on sale. It's like, yeah. There's no reason you have to pay with the full price. That it's the same shit. Yeah, but, they changed the name from Modern Warfare to Advanced Warfare. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I know you guys don't like it. Ariel walked in there, 
and they just gave her free Pokemon shit for going to GameStop for her 3DS game. Oh, like, really? Oh, you get this card. This oh, shit, character. I need to get Deancey. That yeah, that's, that's what she got. She, she got. she just walked in there. She's like, how do I get that? They're like, here, take it. I'm like, well, that's cool. We weren't going to buy anything, but cool. When did you do this? Last week. Okay. I, think... I like, had certain dates on there. Uh, there was still some time. I'm not sure how much time was left. Okay. Well, I think right. it was plus also whenever their cards run out. So I guess it's probably not, the date part doesn't matter. It's not, it's not like they're just going to throw those cards away when the, when the time runs out. Yeah. It's probably just when the cards run out. Yeah. That's cool. That's good game of the week action. Uh, treasure hunting? Yeah. How many armies you got? Two. I've got five. Okay. So you could go first since you have less. I bet you thought this was a random uh, player's mat over here. Don't take my bit. <laughs> yes, I did thought it was a random player's mat. Well, it's not. Does it house some treasure? Yes. <laughs> I got both of these from Craigslist. Casual encounter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bushido Blade again? We got that before? Yeah. Oh. How much is that worth? Fifteen. Okay. I paid two dollars for this one. This one I had to pay eight dollars for. Oh, Melee? How much is that worth? Fifty-one. Wow. So you're up to sixty-one dollars from your treasure bank? For This is fifty-one, so sixty-one. Uh -huh. And then plus fifteen, seventy-six. Wow. You got a five penalty too, don't you? Yeah, he does. He has a minus five. Melee is only forty-seven. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> oh, it went down. <laughs> and that's gonna be your penalty too when you lose treasure hunting. Ah, oh, I heck, it went down. <laughs> so what's your total at? Uh, minus three, so uh, four seventy-three. Here's my first item. Pokemon Y. I'm going to check just to make sure it didn't go up or down. Last time I looked at it, it was 29. Uh, I met this guy on the... Or Karen actually found this treasure. Let me see if they have any cool Pokemon on there. They don't. He said they just started. I checked all of them. All the games were already like one minute or whatever. Complete. 29.50. Thank you, Nick. You didn't seem too scared by your 73 there. I bet you thought this was a random Pokemon Pearl game. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my case. Check out what's inside. Oh, Ruby and Leaf Green? Yep. They said, yeah, we ran into some bad, hard times. We need to get rid of all these games. Leaf Green is 1633. Uh, Ruby is 1415. Pokemon Platinum. So and Pokemon. Sapphire? Pokemon Platinum is 26.65. And Sapphire is 15.26. Okay, so this is all you got for 10 bucks? That's all I got for 10 bucks. So when they said. So you got all those for 10 bucks? Yes. So the, the initial one was for Pokemon Y. And I was like, what other games do you have in your car? And they were like, well, we have these other Pokemon games that we were going to sell. I was like, well, I'll take them off your hands. Cool. I want to have somebody I don't know over to my house for $10. We met at a um, at the Coles by my by our house. So he's leaving his house and meeting you someplace where he, for $10? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. I told Karen, a lot of people must want these. Like, game's gone or something, they need money real bad, like they're drug addicts. <laughs> but Karen found all that, and I was like, oh, you gained you all say this. say it like your quote. I need money real bad. <laughs> <laughs> what is it at? 98? 96? Oh, Minus 5? Yes! Alright. So let's get this punishment out of the way. You want your punishment first, or your prize? Yeah. What was the shout out for the Android calculator, Nick? <laughs> Using the product name in a shout out? What's up? You just did it. <laughs> okay, first roll. Nine. Death punch times five. Or five. Nut tap. Death punch times five. Now for my prize. Seven. 
Buttercup. <laughs> Eleven, Shockmaster. Let's do that Shockmaster and Death Punch at the same time. What's <laughs> a Death Punch? Punch him heck hard as I can in the shoulder five times. Five times? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can change to a Nut Tap if you want. No. A Nut Tap Shockmaster. <laughs> Knock out two birds with one stone and have the Shockmaster be the nut tap. Just put the Shockmaster <laughs> on the nuts. That would work. <laughs> have you guys done that yet? No, we haven't shocked our nuts yet. You guys all have all the kids you want, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shocking my nuts. <laughs> Just try one. Me too. No. Alright. No. One nut's totally fine. Okay, where do you want these? Is he putting all four on or just two? All four. Oh, shit. Do you want to be on the couch? No. So that when you're in agony that after, afterwards you can lay down? I'm sure I'll be okay. It's not going up. I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> oh, not, bitch. I'm trying to turn it off. I was. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and like us on Facebook and follow us on YouTube. And check out on our YouTube. We have all of our videos there, all of our pod podcasts. And people have been asking us, they've been listening to the old podcast, if all the stories they hear are real. <laughs> I was there when that was asked. Yeah, you were? Yeah, Mike was asking if that was real. And Nick's like, I don't know, those guys are liars. <laughs> was it was it about the goat? Um, he asked, uh, what, "Which story did he ask about?" I think it was about the goat. It was because it, it was he, he listened to like one of the like he listened to the first podcast and created it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stories you hear on it are real. Um, our Uncle Joey did finger a goat. <laughs> our Auntie Barbara did show me a picture of her vagina like three years ago. On <laughs> the cell phone. On the cell phone. Yeah. Because she just figured out her phone could take pictures. And she's like showing everyone, look at this, look at this. And it's my Uncle Bully down there. And her lips are pulled oh. over his face like a scuba mask. And I was like, why do I need to see this? <laughs> Brandon, he up on the podcast, he's like, I didn't get to see it. Yeah. Like, like, I didn't get to. Yeah, I'm, Like, you missed out. <laughs> no, I was proud I didn't. Because you're the one that's always wanting to go visit the crazy people. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very funny. What about the story with you wiping your ass on a pair of shorts? That's true. All true. <laughs> that's my favorite one. <laughs> it's all true. And it's nasty. Yeah. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Karen's like, Brad, again. <laughs> so we're going to... Go ahead and bust out this top five here for you guys. Top five comedies that we've seen. We're going to start with Brad and go around. Uh, my number five is going to be, I pulled it from my quote time, which was Napoleon Dynamite. Every time I watch that movie, I laugh. And it's such a stupid movie, but you just can't help laughing at all the characters. Uh, Rex Quando, who teaches people to, to have the wisdom of a man. And he's shown <laughs> putting a woman in a headlock. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, Kip, very Break the funny. arm, walk away. You break the arm, walk away. <laughs> it's hilarious. Go watch Napoleon Dynamite if you haven't watched it yet. All right, am I going then? So, yep. All right, my movie is somewhat obscure. I'm sure you guys have never seen it. Nick has seen it. Let's see if he knows what it is. It's in 2003. A man caught up in the glamour of being a Hollywood celebrity has no idea that the production he's in is a fake. Bowfinger. You know, you've never seen this. This is a movie... It's, a, it's technically a TV movie from 2003, but I brought it because you guys haven't seen it, so you guys can probably, you guys, I'll let you borrow it because it's fucking funny as fuck. I can pull this out of my bag here. It's called Windy City Heat. You're it's, right, we haven't seen this. It's, it's a comedy where they have this, um, the guy is slow, and <laughs> someone they've been fucking with for 10 years. They've been fucking with him for 10 years, and they get him to think that he's going to try out for this movie. So they have, you know, it's a whole elaborate thing, and him making him think he tries out, gets his part in this movie, and he, they even get him to think he makes this movie over, like, eight days. And it's just, the whole movie, this is a prank movie, where it's, it's real, they're messing with him. And at the end of the movie, he thinks he's some kind of celebrity. It's, it's pretty good. I was looking at my list, I'm like, you know what, I think a lot of my list is movies that I think are really funny, and Nick watches them and goes, eh. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoyed that movie. <laughs> That's a pretty good movie. It's not on my top five, but it, I liked it. Well, I wanted to pick the movies that you weren't going to be on your list. I'm trying to get the list more diverse. Like, the first thing on the gate, I was talking to Justin last night. He's like, don't pick Napoleon Dynamite. Everyone's going to pick yeah. that. So, yeah, I, guess I, I guess he was right on that I one. guess he was. <laughs> I do love that movie, though. Yeah, it's funny. But when you see the heat, I mean, I, I tried to pick movies, too, that I've watched, you know, three or more times. I've yeah. watched this movie quite a few times. And people watch it, and I've had a few people I've watched it with, they're like, that's not real. That's not real. I'm like, it's real. <laughs> Have you ever seen him interviewed? They even had a podcast with the three of them for a while on Corolla's network. Because it was produced by Adam Corolla and Jimmy Kimmel. And um, it's real. He's, he's real dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so my number five, I'm not really sure if it holds up to be on a top five comedies list, but it caught me at a time when I was really into hockey, and I was an adolescent who really appreciated unsophisticated humor. It's Happy Gilmore. This is hands down Adam Sandler's greatest comedy. There are a lot of memorable lines and a lot of memorable characters. I also like that the one black guy in the movie died when he fell out of a window after being startled <laughs> by the alligator who had earlier eaten his hand. Chubbs. Yep. I thought it was a real, it was a ironic way to kill off Chubbs, and that later served as inspiration for Happy and the and the movie. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. I think that if I was to watch it again, I might not enjoy it quite as much as I did as a high schooler. But uh, I'm probably not going to watch it again because I, I I choose to remain uh, blissful in yeah, thinking it, about it, this movie. It holds up better than his other movies. I mean, yeah. you watch Billy Madison doesn't hold up as well, but this movie, yeah, it holds up better than some of the others. So you've watched it in your adulthood? Yeah, it's it's a good movie. I mean, yeah. fuck Adam Sandler these days, but that movie that movie holds up. Come on, Spanglish was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Wilson's not saying Spanglish. <laughs> <laughs> Number five on my list is Ghostbusters. <clears throat> mixing horror and comedy. I think there's a bunch of movies with the Dan Aykroyd, um, Bill Murray and that other guy, Remus or whatever. <laughs> huh? It's Will Will Remus. <laughs> no, it's not Will. I know. I know. Uh, That's a joke. It's Will Ramis. It's, it's Harold Ramis. Harold Ramis. Did he, did he fucking, die recently? Yeah. yeah, fucking Brandon's not being considered of knowing people's names who died. <laughs> like, he fucking died, and Brandon's like, I don't know that fuck. <laughs> but uh, there are a bunch of movies like Stripes and... Maybe Caddyshack. That Harold Ramis was in? That all three of them were in. Mm -hmm. But um, this was the best, in my opinion. I didn't find Stripes as funny. Uh, there's this old guy at my work that says that's the best comedy, but huh. it didn't... The same guy who does the descriptions of the video games? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is another guy. But I couldn't get it. I bought Stripes just because he recommended it, and I thought it was not funny at all. Is this the guy that says in heaven you eat angel food cake? Probably. He might have said that. <laughs> or in hell you eat devil's food cake. Food. <laughs> <laughs> Number four on my list is going to have to be a combo. Borat and Bruno by Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, such great movies. Borat gets me every time. Bruno gets me every time, too. It's just... I love those movies so much. Yeah, and I knew I knew Nick would probably have him because fucking Nick jacks off to Sasha Brown Cohen like every day, but <laughs> otherwise I would put them on my list twice, <laughs> twice a day. Twice a day. <laughs> All right, I uh, for my next movie, I I had who wants to do a reenactment with me? I printed out a page from the script. I'll do it. You want to do it now? Do you want to do the funny part or do you want to do the straight part? Uh, you it could pick. Doesn't matter. You could pick. Okay, I'll let you do the funny part then. Oh, you'll, right. you'll find the others right away. So I highlighted your, your parts, and I crossed out the, the acting cues, because oh. it's actual script. So, so you, you're up first. You, got, you, know, you see if you guys know what movie this is. You'll know what it is. Hey, how's it going, man? Not so good. I'm hallucinating like crazy. I think it's a drug these army guys put me on. It's kind of top secret, but if you could just get me well enough to get back to base... Uh-huh, uh-huh. Kick ass! Anyway, I don't want to sound like a dick or nothing, but I looked at your charts and it seems like you're fucked up. You talk, <laughs> you talk like a fag, <laughs> and your shit may be retarded. <laughs> what I do, man, is get plenty of rest. What? Well, I I want a second opinion. Omnipal doesn't lie, man. But listen, there's plenty of tards out there living really kick-ass lives. My first wife was a tarded, and she's a pilot. 
Oh, okay, I'm going to another hospital. So that'll be $6 billion. <laughs> so if you can, just sign this while I scan you. Wait, $6 billion? What? And scene. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know what that is. You know what that is, Brandon? No. Huh? Yeah. Nick knows what it is, right? I, I don't recognize it not from your rendition of it anyway. That's that's idiocracy when you oh, to the doctor. Nice. When Justin Long is a doctor. Right, 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 huh? right. Yeah, this is this. Have you seen the Oxy Brandon? No, I haven't seen it. No, I think I have it. I just haven't seen it. It's it's a brilliant movie. It I mean, is. It's really uh, good. It's basically the premise is you know that <laughs> <laughs> no, I that, don't have it. That only dumb people have a, a huge amount of kids, and the smarter you are, the less kids you have. So <laughs> he goes, I don't know how long. He goes in the future, like you know, a couple hundred years or something. <laughs> I don't and know. And everybody that. is he. You know, the premise was he was of at perfectly average intelligence, and he goes in the future and all seems genius. Right. Because everybody, all the dumb people are having so many kids. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, he goes to a doctor and a doctor. <laughs> Obviously. That scene. Don't believe that, because it's a script. It's a script. I'm not going to believe quote. it. You can't, you can't believe a quote. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how funny it is. I think that said fag and retarded, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> in the same sentence. It's the same sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, you're up, Nick. Okay. My number four is Spinal Tap, written by Rob Reiner, Christopher Guest, Michael McKean, and Harry Shearer. Uh, the faux documentary covers a 1982 U.S. tour of the fictional British rock band Spinal Tap. I first watched the movie in uh, the early 2000s when I was playing in a band with some of my best friends. We never reached the level of spi Spinal Tap, but being in a band helped me to appreciate just how great this movie is. Uh, the ridiculous conversations that they have with each other, all the weird, crazy tension that each band member felt with each other for really no reason at all. Um... Just the terrible letdown that they share at each gig. It's just something that any band really can relate to. Uh, the most classic scene in the movie for me is when Rob Reiner, as uh, the interviewer Marty DeBerge, is interviewing Christopher Guest as Nigel Tufnell. He's the guitar player. And uh, Nigel is displaying his collection of instruments and accessories. And uh, this scene occurs. Check it out. This is a top to uh, you know, what we use on stage, but it's very... Very special because if you can see, yeah. the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. Wow. 11, oh, 11, mostly 11. Amps go up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is that any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not 10. You see, most, most blokes are going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, my number four was Napoleon Dynamite. I just remember getting this movie when it first came out and like no one really knew what it was. I watched it. And I had to watch it again because I was like, what is the big deal with this movie? And after a second watching, I found out what the big deal was. It was hilarious. That's interesting. I had the same experience with it where I was like, why? What's exactly. so funny about this? And then when I watched it again, I really lo I really enjoyed it. I was smart enough to realize how funny it was first view. Yeah. It's, it's much, Xbox just, 10 is much smarter this is, than this. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Rico. I like when they're sitting there watching this football video. Yeah. It's like the worst video I've ever seen. <laughs> Napoleon, how can anyone ever know that? <laughs> and what does he go like? You could get out or something like that. It's like a funny. Number three on my list is going to have to be This Is The End with Seth Rogen and uh, Danny McBride. Uh, James Rochelle. That movie is just hilarious. The, the highlight of that movie is... Uh, Danny McBride. It's hilarious. It's just his whole come throwing part when he's like, "Who come on my my Playboy? Who come on my Dirty magazine?" He's like, "I come wherever I want." <laughs> what he's talking about is I just slip it right in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy to fuck this guy in the ass. <laughs> that movie's hilarious. I could you could laugh throughout that whole movie. <laughs> James Franco's hella funny in it. Uh, Jonah Hill gets raped by a demon. <laughs> My movie's from 2006. We're doing Parental Guides before, so... I'll read you the Parental Guide. You'll, you'll get it eventually, but see who can get it first. This is a movie we all know. Nick doesn't like it because he's not sophisticated. Ah! Dry. I think, I think this is another movie I let him borrow. He's like, eh, let's, 
It was, it was, it was a movie there. It's, I might have laughed once. All right, so sex and nudity. A topless female at a drug and alcohol party is shown. <laughs> fucking drug and alcohol party <laughs> is shown, and Barry sucks on her breasts. While Samantha is drunk and high at the party, she sings karaoke and tries to lick her own clothed breasts and passes out. A guy is caught masturbating, but there is no nudity. It's then stated that he ejaculated on his friend's mother. Grandma's boy. <laughs> yeah. I think the, there was, the last one was, Jeff and Grace start kissing and she puts his hand on her closed breast. Later, they are lying naked under the sheets together after having sex. <laughs> Many sexual jokes and innuendos. But, yeah, the Grandma's boy... I I like the little video game references. I, I, there isn't really another comedy like that. There are, how many comedy video game movies are there? Yeah, there's not a lot. Huh? Even though Nick didn't like it, though. The was Wizard. Huh? <laughs> the Wizard. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim, you could argue, is a comedy. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim is cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I. That's I mean, that's not straight comedy, but yeah. yeah that's that, what I said you could argue. That, that is a cool movie, but I I love Grandma's Boy. I've, I've watched it like 10 times. My favorite part is when they're doing the dance dance yeah. and he's like, oh, what does that new high score mean? What's that mean? Yeah. <laughs> or the guy who thinks he's in the Matrix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you see me? Yeah. Huh? I saw this oh. movie in the theaters when I was out for the only week of release. Uh, I took this girl on a date there and she's like, what do you want to see? I said, Grandma's Boy. She didn't like it at all. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think I was it's like, uh, I, at this point, I was pretty much done with Adam Sandler anyway. So I'm like, now I'm going to fucking see a movie with Adam Sandler's friends. He doesn't even bother to show up. <laughs> yeah. Or is he in one scene? Is he in one scene in this movie? Or not? I don't think he I is. I don't think so. Because sometimes another movie will pop up like a scene. Like, what movie was that? I think it was like a Rob Snyder movie. It was like a weed. Like, you put your weed in there. The animal? Yeah, it might have been. But, um, yes. It just came out of nowhere. It's a fucking funny movie. Yeah. Right, you're up, Nick. My number three is Jackass, the original from 2002. I really enjoy the Jackass film because they don't even pretend to have a plot. They know what they are. It's right in the title. They're just a bunch of jackasses who do, do dumb shit. To me, the funniest scene is when uh, Chris Pontius, as party boy, strips down to a thong <laughs> and dances around an appliance store in Japan. A Japanese policeman tries to stop him and party boy just dances around him. At one point, even takes his hat. <laughs> There's a uh, one scene with Ryan Dunn. It's actually the finale. It's uh, it's called the what is it? Butt X-ray or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Be sweet ad. Yeah, probably. That's not butter, girl. That's something extra. How would it know if I ate that? <laughs> no, you you won't be able to swap that. <laughs> That's it's a car toy. Well, how did a car toy get there? Maybe you stuck it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I like later they're, they're showing the doctors like in the back he's talking to someone on the phone he's like yeah they were at some wild party and someone yeah. sucked something <laughs> up his ass <laughs> I passed out and they sucked something up his ass I think he said that but he said it in a different language so it's in subtitles yeah you're right that's, and yeah. That, that's what it, I just cut it off yeah. <laughs> didn't make for a good pod <laughs> <laughs> well I watched my movie and I actually watched the movie and took videos and cut it down for you so it's not to have ads like thanks well uh, I you're awesome. Uh, Next. I spent, I spent like four hours on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my number three as well, the Jackass movies. I could, that's one third of being, um, like, I like, always try to do top five ways to relax. <laughs> but, but that never makes a cut. So this is one third of my top way to relax is Jackass movies. The other third is sorting Dragon Ball cards. Finished off with sushi. And a nice How are you going to make a top five out of thirds? I wasn't. I was going <laughs> to do like eating sushi as number five and then like drinking a Pepsi while as number four. Uh, and then number you, three is sorting Dragon Ball cards. And number two is watching Jackass movies. All right, all right. You ever heard of coming? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> was that your number one? <laughs> no, my number one was. Two through four combined. Oh, wow. My... I watch movies with girl privates, not guy privates, to relax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have a sand vagina in the first one. <laughs> Number two on my list is going to have to be Step Brothers. Boats and hose all the way, best part of the movie. 
this movie looks so dumb in actuality, but it's so funny. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just cracks me up every time. I I think I probably well, it's, this is coming up, getting pretty close to the comedy I've watched more than other comedies. There's probably a few I've watched that are older, you know, because this isn't that old. Yeah, and I've probably watched this movie twenty times. Yeah, it's really and good. me and my daughter watch it. I, I still think when we watch with my daughter, I still have her close her eyes in a couple parts, <laughs> like when she's fucking riding him in the yeah. bathroom stall. Something's gonna <laughs> happen. The there's one other part I think. Oh, when his testes come out, yeah. I was like, "Hold on, you know, <laughs> Wait, not, but they're not even real." Like, yeah, I'm only saying I'm so. No, they're prosthetic. I've read they're prosthetic. <laughs> you were researching, or you're like, Jesse Will Ferrell. I was. <laughs> I think it's in the trivia section of IMDb. <laughs> nice. You would think he'd use his real, his own. No, he he had to pay top dollar to see that shit. He's probably like, "I'm Will Ferrell, damn it! You have to pay a thousand dollars to see my testicles." All right, we all know my second movie, so I'm just gonna. I have a. I'm just gonna read this. This the best part of the movie. I have a little script here. We're dicks. We're reckless, arrogant, stupid dicks. And the Film Actors Guild are pussies. And Kim Jong Il is an asshole. Pussies don't like dicks because pussies get fucked by dicks. But dicks also fuck assholes. Assholes who just want to shit on everything. Pussies may think they could deal with assholes their way. The only thing that could fuck an asshole is a dick with some balls. The problem with dicks is they fuck too much or when it isn't appropriate. And it takes a pussy to show them that. But sometimes pussies can be so full of shit that they become assholes themselves. Because pussies are an inch and a half away from assholes. I don't know much about this crazy, crazy world, but I do know that if you don't let us fuck this asshole, we're going to have our dicks and pussies all covered in shit. <laughs> you guys all know what that is? Team America. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> number two movie. My number two is the original Dumb and Dumber. The movie features the best work from Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. There's no unnecessary scenes, and each scene offers a good laugh. One scene in particular that I find particularly funny, with Harlan Williams as a state trooper <laughs> pulling over uh, Harry and Lloyd. I'm just going to play that. It's real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my number two, the original Dumb and Dumber. That was my number two as well. Oh man, yeah. copycat! Yeah, uh, Nick said it. Jim Carrey's best movie. Uh, only one that could almost beat it is Cable Guy. Ah, uh, <laughs> Cable Guy is good. You don't like Cable Guy? Mm -hmm. I don't remember Cable Guy. I just remember it wasn't enough for me to watch it a second time. My favorite part of Dumb and Dumber is when they're making a snowman and he puts the carrot in the coal <laughs> <laughs> in the testicle region. <laughs> There's a lot of funny stuff. We were watching, my daughter just finally got that. We were watching that <laughs> a couple nights ago. Nice. She's now old enough to realize why that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> my number one was Dumb and Dumber. Uh, I've been saying it for years. It's my favorite comedy and you can't top it. Number one, Dumb and Dumber. I've definitely watched Dumb and Dumber a lot of times. Yeah. My wife was watching it the other day. When me and Arrow were watching it, she's like, yeah, this doesn't hold up. I'm like, you're fucking crazy. And she didn't watch it with me and Arrow. Arrow's seen it a bunch of times, too. She's probably seen it five times. She's 11. It's, yeah. It's a good movie. All right. Am I, am I up? Yep. All right. Well, I w watched my favorite comedy last night, and I took a few videos of some of my favorite parts. You guys might want to You can take a look at this, see if you can guess this. But... I, it's, I, it's, I know what it is. Spoiler alert. Fucking Nick. Was, <laughs> he came over last night to borrow Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Apparently, he thinks it's so good that he has it on the DVD and it's borrow mine. But <laughs> we went to go play some Xbox and he saw my, what I was watching. I'm like, God, God damn it. You spoiled the reveal. Because <laughs> I wanted to hear you. You, know, you have to fucking fake laugh when you find out what it is now, Nick. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, this is my movie. You can look at this, Brandon, because this is, this is visual. It's all visual. There's no fun. But I'm going to play it. It's a minute long. I, this is actually me recording my TV. There's a person with a maggot out of their nose. Oh. It's funny because there's a maggot thing out of her nose.
<laughs> you guys know what this is? Passion of the Christ. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm letting this guy laugh right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite part of the movie, these little demon kids. <laughs> That's Judas. Watch these little kids turn into demons. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then, then Satan's little demon baby makes me laugh. A smile on this demon makes me laugh. You heard me laughing right there. That was me laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at <a> smile. <laughs> Hell yeah. That was the last part. I like this curly in this guy's eyeballs. <laughs> That's the guy that was being shitty to Jesus on the cross. <laughs> yeah. I do enjoy watching the religious movies. I am not a fan of the God of Abraham. <laughs> My hobby is reading. <laughs> I read the Bible a lot. I just watch all religious stuff and I study it just so I can make fun of people. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Passion of the Christ, I mean, it, it it's it's kind of silly, you know, but Mel Gibson it is a good movie. He made it well. It's just, <laughs> I laugh at all how, like, ridiculous it is. Because compared to some of the other movies, he actually tells the story accurately. Mm -hmm. Like, I just watched the, the Bible miniseries that they had on TV, the 10 part one. And they just changed shit just to be more politically correct. <laughs> right. Mel Gibson did it right, like, the, like with the Jews and stuff, but. The thing is, he, he told the story right, but the Jews were just like over the top, like ridiculous, like, fuck Jesus, you know? <laughs> and they're like, you know, and the Romans, when they're like whipping him, it's like, they can't just whip him. They have to be like, ah! <laughs> 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 oh, yes! <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm coming! Oh! <laughs> but like, there's like an hour, like, one guy just whipping him, like, ah! <laughs> and like, spit is like coming out of his mouth. <laughs> All right, you're on this. Alright, so they alluded to it that I get a hard-on for Sasha Baron Cohen, so my number one is Borat. Cultural learnings of America for make benefit glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Shout out to Bruno and the Dictator, but I only wanted one Sasha Baron Cohen boat movie on my list. It has to be Borat. There's so many quotable lines. Uh, it's such a great character. He has an accent that's really easy to mimic and fun for everyone. Uh, every scene to learn. Yes, I like. I really enjoy uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's use of reality comedy in his movies and the allergy show. Uh, to me, the reactions that he elicits from ordinary people is probably the most funny part of the whole of his whole gimmick. There's one scene in particular. This was actually from the, the deleted scenes on Borat yes. that I'm going to play for you, where he goes <laughs> to a dog pound to get a dog. Here. Yes. I don't know if you have anything in particular that you're looking for. I want the dog. Okay. <laughs> he is about 10 to 11 weeks old, and he's probably going to be about a medium-sized dog once he's grown. He's looking at the dog's ass. Good. Yes. <laughs> is uh, it trained? No. Can I see if I can uh, train her? Uh, you stand there, please. Uh, put uh, your fingers on the uh, head. Like you. Yes, the other finger too. Yes, you say uh, shallow. Attack! Attack the Jew! <laughs> no, he's not a trend. Uh, uh, probably not to sniff out a Jew. Uh, why not? Jews are Jesus' children. She probably loves Jews. Are you religious? Yes, I am a Cossack. I worship the. Uh, Mighty Hawk. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's an idol. You shouldn't do that. And how do you recommend uh, to cook this? No, no cook. Uh, no, uh, not now. Uh, but after my travel, after he have uh, protect me and give me companion and sexy time. Uh, how do you recommend? Uh, if that's what you want to do, do not now. Do not tell no. me what to do, woman. You don't want to kill or eat. No, I not. No, no, I do. Woman, you told me this was my dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. so that's my number one is Borat. That's my number one as well. 
Uh, oh man, you had the top same top three as me. I did. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Borat, great movie. Like when they do the running of the Jew, I laugh every time I see that. <laughs> and the Jew, the Jew woman uh, ha uh, lays a Jew egg. And they have to kill the Jew egg before it hatches. <laughs> I had a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, the Hangover, mm -hmm. uh, The Jerk with Steve Martin, kind of a classic. Tend not to enjoy the classics as much for some reason, probably because I'm not old enough to appreciate them. And uh, another Jim Carrey great, Ace Ventura, Pit Detective. You're worried about having them were holding up, but you're all about Ace Ventura? Did I put it on my HM? Yes, you did put it on your HM. Then <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, I had Super Bad, uh, Happy Gilmore, Kindergarten Cop, the best Arnold Schwarzenegger comedy, Pineapple <laughs> Express, The Hangover, and Revenge of the Nerds. Do we want to talk about Dumb and Dumber 2 since we... Yeah, let's do Dumb, Dumb and Dumber 2 and then we could do uh, Tim's Game. Cool. I was really worried about Dumb and Dumber 2. Man. I was too. Because I'm like, especially since they have reviews before. Because when you go on Rotten Tomatoes and like, no reviews, like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. Mm. Well, fuck, awesome. man. That, we were laughing the whole fucking time, man. That was, that was a fun movie. It was really good. I, that was, I was, yeah, it, it was good. I don't know. You, you couldn't do much better than that with, with those characters. It was really worth it. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, there was a storyline. I mean, it wasn't the greatest storyline, but it, it pushed the, the, it pushed the action. Everything made sense. Everything just kind of fell into place and the characters were hilarious as, as they were in the first one, really. Maybe even more so. I was thinking they were going to bring a lot of the same, like, jokes back and, like, so the same way, like, yeah. like, but they didn't really. There was no point where I was like, uh. Yeah. No, it, was, it, was, it was fun, man. What, what was the kid's name? Billy or whatever? Yeah. Billy and 4C. Yeah. They brought Billy and 4C back. That was yeah. pretty funny. That was fun. <clears throat> and they brought the, uh, the sheep mobile or whatever they call it back. The shagging wagon. <laughs> I think I think like what Brandon said, dude, they brought everybody back except for um except for sea bass. Yeah. Everything was everything was back except for sea bass. That was fun. Yeah, good times for sure. A minus. A minus is fair. Yeah, there's no... It might not make my top five comedies, but I mean, it, it holds up. It, it, it does Dumb and Dumber justice because it could have ruined the legacy. I mean, sure. Because I don't really count Dumb and Dumber because it wasn't you know made by the same people you know, but if they would have fucked this up, man, it's like, and they would kind of would have tarnished the original movie. Yeah, sure. huh? it would have. Oh, they did good. Yep. Uh, there's a pretty um, mi misogynistic <laughs> comment that one of them makes. Oh yeah, about the... <laughs> yeah, that was funny. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> What was it called? Like Doctor of Laundry? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor of Doing Laundry. I thought more people were going to clap at that part. Uh, I think we were laughing a lot more than other people. Because there were a lot of teenagers in the theater. Yeah. I think we were the only like people who probably saw the original movie when it came yeah. out in the theater. Everyone else in the theater was all teenagers. Yep. But go, go out and see it if you haven't seen it already. It's really funny. Mario's Backside. Alright, so... Same as last time. I, I loaded up. I got 15 movies. Yes. So, or 15 games. So it's... First three. And mm. since you guys shamed me last time for not bringing in prizes, I brought some prizes. Oh, oh. Wow. I have three, so and this is good this is good shit too. Alright. Well good shit that I like. I'll <laughs> keep I'll keep track of score. Of course you will. So yeah, fifty dollars for so, like, Super Mario. Well you're you're <laughs> <laughs> It's all good shit, so you're gonna whoever wins gets to pick first. Okay. Slick, the meanest, most powerful gang lord in blank. Has issued this crisis. River City Ransom. That's correct. Carnivorous robots chow down in Chinatown, where all Bruda Ninjutsu warriors, blood descendants of the deadly Blank Clan, bust up bystanders from the Bronx to Broadway. Police SWAT teams can't stop them, but the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can. Because powered by slices of pizza, they're always ready to rumble with nunchakus, katana blades. You guys have no balls. Carmen. <laughs> Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Katana Blades? Crisis. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project. And a party bus loaded with anti-foot clan missiles. So team, team up with the Turtles. Raphael, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Donatello. Then switch on the t <laughs> Tortoise Raider. Follow in your map and six cents past savage traps and secure sewage passages until you knock heads with the nasty ninjutsus and other... And either spotter them senseless or get yourself turned into turtle soup. 
I only know two other TMNT games. <clears throat> I get. I'll just gonna go with the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yep. Yep. Got the turtle van in the radar. Yeah. Your pulse quickens. Beams, boxes, zigzags, and L-shaped building blocks. Kermit. <laughs> Rochambeau. Rochambeau. Tetris. <laughs> The land of Hyrule is in chaos. As Link, you'll be sent on a treacherous journey to return six precious crystals. Corman. That's that's Brandon. Uh, Zelda Two: The Adventures of Link. I don't know if I want to accept that. Do you guys accept that as the actual title? No. Torment. Zelda Two: The Adventure of Link. Do you accept? I don't know if that's the. Uh. I think I know I, what I, it I, is. I just didn't know it was started with Zelda 2. Is it Zelda 2? It uh, doesn't. I didn't know if it was The Adventures of Link or just Adventures of it's Link. It's Adventure. That's what I, that's what I. Because what's written on the back of the box is The Adventure of Link. Oh, so it is The Adventure of Link. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, Zelda 2 is. Okay. Alright, here we go. You're up, Nick. The universe teeters on the brink of total annihilation at the hands of the vile alien warmonger, Red Falcon. Earth's only hope rests with... Crisis. Contra. That's correct. <clears throat> oh, shit. Got a game now. Yeah, 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. Crisis with 2, Torment with 2, Kane with 1. You'll have to think fast and move even faster to complete this quest. The Mushroom Princess is being held captive by the evil Koopa tribe of Turtles. Torment. Super Mario Brothers 3. It's up to you to rescue her from the clutches of Koopa King before time runs out. But it won't be easy. To get the princess, you'll have to climb mountains, cross seas, avoid bottomless pits, fight off turtle soldiers, and a host of black magic traps that only a Koopa King can devise. Crisis, Super Mario Brothers. It's bros. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the first of three? I thought you said five. Yeah, I do have 15, so I guess, I guess I did say first of three, but I guess it would be five, considering I, I loaded 15. This thrilling Nintendo programmable game lets you vary the obstacles. Torment! Sure. Excite Bike! Yes. I thought you guys would have got it right away at programmable. <laughs> Far away in a kingdom called Angel Land. Torment! Aww, Kid Icarus! <laughs> oh, he's on, he's good game one point. Away. He's one away. Led by the immortal Count Dracula, the greatest army of evil ever assembled is poised to bury mankind in a tomb of terror, destroying this legion of swamp dragons, slasher skeletons, and forces of... Kane, Castlevania. Gambling. The slayer skeletons and forces of the undead will be a supreme challenge for the mightiest of warriors. Your place in history is a hundred years before Simon Belmont's birth. Dracula is your... Uh, Castlevania 3. Full title? Uh, Dracula's Curse. Correct. Oh, tied. Three, uh, four with Crisis, four with Torment, King with oh. King. <laughs> Only one man knows the real story behind Marion's disappearance. Crisis! Double Dragon! <laughs> and he's dead. Oh. King! Double Dragon 2. Now the double dragons <laughs> must rely on a mysterious fortune teller to live. Torment. Oh, I hit double dragon three. The sacred stones. Ah, oh. double dragon three. All right. I have surprised you. I have. I have two movies that we were talking about last time I was here, and you guys hadn't seen. So I, I got these movies. These are wildly fucked up movies. You're going to watch these. Like, oh, what the fuck is this? Oh, man. But you have to watch the whole movie. You guys... Are you prone to seizures? Yes. This is <laughs> this will induce seizures. <laughs> this is Enter the Void. It's oh, like, man. These are both Gaspar Noe movies. These are... These are... These are, these are crazy movies. Re Irreversible. Oh, Irreversible. I think that's what I wanted to see. Oh, this is one with the rape scene in it, huh? Oh, it's got a rape scene? <laughs> He's like excited now. <laughs> yes, there's a rape scene. Right, so, got... so, so, Brandon chooses first, right? And then Brad, and then Nick. Uh, Brad got five. Oh, Bob, Brad. And I also got this is a game me and Nick and Justin play a lot. It's a little dice game. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. Oh, but, cool. But that's a fun. That's a fun zombie game. It's zombie dice. dice. We like to play it to see who goes first in Munchkin. It's like you go 
has a bunch of dice in there. You can see who can get thirteen brains first. Oh man, it's a it's a pretty fun game. We That's like to play. Fun, yeah. We like to play it all the time. It's it's super simple, you know, but it's pretty fun just to you know, it's a change of pace. A game that you know it lasts you know five ten minutes. I'm gonna take the zombie dice. Yeah, that's a fucking good choice. It's fucking. I love all these things, so they're all good choices. Come on, Brandon, pick the right movie. You know <laughs> you want it. <laughs> yeah. What is this movie about? Enter what the void. Yes. Enter the void. That has more of like a uh, like a horror aspect to it. Does it's, it? That's it's a first person. The whole movie's in first person. Like you see him blink and shit. And like he like at the beginning of the movie, he's like he this friend is talking to him about the book of the dead and shit. And then it will lead you to believe that I believe that he. Influenced by that movie, he did some DMT and he thinks he's dead. Okay, I'll check but, this out. Enter the void. Yeah, it's, and I have the irreversible. I can see some titties right on the cover. And Nick's been Nick's been. We've been talking about that movie for years. So I thought fun time Nick saw this and be like, "What the fuck is this movie, man?" <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's cool. Right, also, the best thing about irreversible that bitch, she's in my top top number one comedy. Monica Bellucci. Oh fuck yeah. She's Mary Magdalene. She's fucking hot. She's a fucking hot whore in that movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Awesome. Uh, jerk of the Week. If you guys got a Jerk of the Week this time, hashtag Jerk of the Week. Who gives a fuck who sees it? If your Jerk of the Week sees it, then maybe they'll stop being a jerk. <laughs> I do not have a Jerk of the Week. Nope. I let my anger out on last episode, so I'm, pre- I'm okay. I don't. I don't think I have a, a true jerk of the week. I guess my dog is my jerk of the week because he's making me fix this hole that he freaking kicked in the wall. Every once in a while, he'll get really excited and he'll just run around the house. And he's a big dog. He's about ninety five pounds. He kicked a hole in one of, in the in the wall, and I've been spending the last couple of nights trying to patch it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if I told you this story, Nick, but I was I was I work I'm a garbage man. I do the dumpsters, and um, I go there's an apartment complex. I was on Monday. And, um, th- this place has where, um, th- each enclosure has two dumpsters. So I'll pull both of them out and put them side by side so people can't drive by me. Cause I don't like people driving by. Cause stuff can fall out of the dumpsters and I don't like it. Cause I'm watching a dumpster and those are like barely squeeze by me. It's like, that's how you're going to get hit. And that's, so I just like to be safer. I can, I save time and I'm safer. I don't, I don't want them driving around me while I'm mm-hmm. dumping bins. And they'll roll their wheels. Now they roll into the car. It's like, that's on me. If you're barely squeezing by and that bin rolls an inch, then I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I just put them side by side. And you can go the other, the fucking apartment complex is a circle, go the other way when you see the giant orange truck with the fucking beacons yeah. flashing and the beepers. Go the fucking other, spend the 10 seconds, go the other way. Yeah. Don't expect me to move for you. But I was, I, I had them blocked off and, um, I was dumping the first one and she rolls up on the, on my left thinking I'm just going to get on my truck, stop what I'm doing, push that dumpster out, full dumpster out of the way, let her drive by and put it back. And no, I just put my back at beeper on until she got the hint that I wasn't doing anything until she moved. And as I was dumping it, she walked over to my my thing and was motioning for me to get out. So I had to get out anyway to push the dumpsters back in. And she's like, the other guy who comes here, he does these one at a time so people can get by. I'm like, well, I don't think he does, first thing. And I'm the one who's here. every. I mean, this is my route. I've been doing this for eight years. <laughs> so maybe if I take a day off, there might be someone who's in here as a rookie who doesn't know what he's doing, you know. And when I do it for my safety, I don't, you know. It's not safe for you. It's not safe for me. You know, there's, there's no reason, you know, like you can't go the other way. And she's like, and she's like, well, the other guy does it. I'm like, well, two enclosures from here, I got hit by a car in this apartment complex because someone was trying to squeeze by. So I prefer not to get hit by cars when I'm working. And she said, well, maybe someone hit you because you're pissing everybody off in here. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that was about the end of that conversation. <laughs> it sucks you can't really fucking, you know, probably you can't beat up bitches in general, but, <laughs> you know, especially not when you're working. That's not, that's frowned upon. It's not PC. It's frowned upon. Yeah, it used to be cool. <laughs> you know. Back in the 50s. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, not so much, so. Yeah, she's jerking. <laughs> the bitch in the fucking red Acura. Fucking bitch. <laughs> red, red Acura and the MDX in Roseville. <laughs> Replace of cool picks, I've got Brandon's 8-bit <laughs> corner. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two games for you. Uh, box art trivia movie edition or what's in the box? Well, that's my tales of uh, what's in the box. Uh, so box art trivia? Sure. Yep. There are 
12. Shit. Oh, man. Um, Are these from a certain console? Or? Uh, movies. Oh, movies. Yeah. Okay. Number one. Four teenagers are given goofy hand signs. Number two. Two men gaze in a window behind a surprised little boy. Number three. A family is climbing down a building with a rope. Number four. Ooh, a hot tamale is standing in front of the Colorado Rockies. Number five. Oh, that's disgusting. A burnt man seems to be in agony. He looks shocked and surprised. <laughs> Number six. A man is standing in the dark under a street lamp. Number seven. Finally, one I recognize. I think that's Django and the Iron Man. Django looks like he's crying or is sad. Number eight. Oh, I know that logo. It's Have a Nice Day. Number nine. Oh, it's that one clown, that jackass. I've never seen him like this. He's wearing a cape. He does a lot of drugs and has sh and has shifty eyes. Number ten. A blue alien with a huge head has given me a weird thumbs up. Is this a kid's movie? I think it is. <laughs> Number eleven. Oh, that's Pretty Woman. <laughs> Does this person really exist? Yes. <laughs> Her name is Sandy. Okay. Number 12. Duke Wayne is standing in front of a classic car holding a rifle. The picture is black and white, if that helps. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. All right, number one. Four teenagers are giving goofy hand signs. Any guesses? Go. What? <laughs> don't listen to any guesses. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have shit. I don't know. Uh, dazed and confused. Ah. Number two. Two men gaze in a window behind a surprised boy. Put Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone, also. Home Alone is right. Number three. A family is climbing down a building with a rope. I put Adventures in Babysitting. That's what I put. That is right. Number four. Ooh, a hot tamale is standing in front of the Colorado Rockies. 127 hours? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Utah, but it's, it's mountains and it's a hot tamale. Rambo three. It wasn't, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Oh, that's disgusting. A burnt man seems to be in agony. He looks shocked and surprised. I'd put Nightmare on Elm Street 2. No. I don't have any guesses. Scanners. Number six. A man is standing in the dark under a street lamp. Exorcist? The Exorcist. Oh, fuck that shit. It's not what I put. I put Primal Fear, because he's standing in there street lamp on that one, too. Number seven. Finally, one I recognize. I think that's Django and the Iron Man. Django looks like he's crying where he's sad. Is it Spider-Man, too? No. Isn't Jamie Foxx in that? Yeah, he yeah. Um, Tropic Thunder? The Soloist. <laughs> Number this is new Django. <laughs> Number eight. Oh, I know that logo. It's Have a Nice Day. Watchmen? Yeah, Watchmen. Watchmen. Number nine. Oh, it's that one clown, that jackass. I've never seen him like this. He's wearing a cape. He does a lot of drugs and has shifty eyes. I put orgasmo. No. <laughs> is, it, is it The Ringer or something? No. It's Nacho Libre. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Black. Number ten. A blue alien with a huge head is giving me a weird thumbs up. Is this a kid's movie? I think it is. It's, I hope it's not Aladdin. I almost put Aladdin. I put, I put Megamind. Is it Megamind? It's Megamind. It's no. not, I thought Aladdin because I'm like, I don't think Megamind would be giving a thumbs up. Isn't yeah. he a bad guy? Yeah. Number 11. Oh, that's Pretty Woman. <laughs> I, thought, I fucking put Pretty Woman. I, I put Mona Lisa Smile. It's Pretty Woman. Oh, oh fucking, I think I win then, bitches. Number 12. 
Duke Wayne is standing in front of a classic car holding a rifle. The picture is black and white, if that helps. Gran Torino? It's Gran Torino. <laughs> I was you how many did you get? Uh, I got one. Did you write down Gran Torino? No, I didn't write it down. Fuck I just guessed it. <laughs> I got Count. one, two, three, four. I got five anyway. Cool. So I guess that'll do it for episode 72 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. I want to take my movie back. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie die. <laughs> this is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Tim. Happy hunting. <laughs>